Welcome to the SharePoint Patterns and Practices short video. This time we'll have a look on how to debug SharePoint Framework solutions in Visual Studio Code. And let's actually jump right into it. So here uh, we have already created an out-of-the-box uh, Visual Studio uh, Code uh, solution or actually SharePoint Framework solution which has been opened up within the Visual Studio Code. As part of the, the version 1.3.4 and forward, we from SharePoint Engineering are including the needed debugging uh, configurations um, to make the debugging as easy as possible within the Visual Studio Code. And there's certain requirements which we need to take into account when we start doing this. So, first of all, the debugging requires, and the easy debugging directly in Visual Studio Code, requires that we have a debugger for Chrome extension installed. For the time being, uh, you have to use the debugger for Chrome. There's no additional debuggers uh, for other browsers available, but this works pretty well uh, in the Chrome browser. It might be that at some point uh, there will be additional extensions which are supporting other browsers as well. So, in your Visual Studio Code, you need to have this extension uh, installed so you can actually start debugging directly within the Visual Studio Code uh, and in the context of the, the, the Chrome browser. Now, let's get back on the code. So, as part of the version 1.3.4 and forward, we will give you the needed configuration in the VS Code folder. So, if you have a look on this launch JSON file, this actually contains the configurations for the debugging. So, how do we, how does the Chrome extension actually behaves? Where does it actually open up? Uh, what are the additional uh, runtime arguments when the Chrome browser actually starts when I start debugging? And there's two different configurations here. We, so, we have a separate configuration uh, for local workbench, uh, which is pointing on to the local host 4321, which is the local workbench URL. And then there's a separate configuration for the hosted workbench. So you can actually choose to start debugging in the context of SharePoint Online as well. Now, let's actually come back on the SharePoint uh, Online experience in a second. And let's test first uh, the local experience or the local host experience here. So, how do we do debugging? We'll go to the actual source code, and in this case, and this is just out of the box, a web part uh, which has been created, and there's no changes yet on the code uh, directly, uh, and this is using the 1.3.4 version. If you're using a newer version of SharePoint Framework, uh, this would, might be looking slightly different again, but the basic uh, functionalities and basic experience for debugging exactly, is exactly the same. Now, if I do a uh, add a breakpoint here uh, in the line 19, we can actually say that I can add that breakpoint available just by clicking the certain section. So now we do have a breakpoint available or marked uh, to our code, and we're basically ready to start debugging. The thing uh, what we need to remember first is to actually start the solution in the no browser mode. So what I'm going to do is that I started the terminal. Uh, but let me actually open up that one using the browser or the window so you can easily find uh, where you can uh, open up that, uh, that terminal console. So if you open up the view window, uh, you can actually see this integrated terminal option. And that will open up uh, the integrated terminal directly within the Visual Studio Code. And you can choose to use uh, PowerShell or command line. There's multiple options here as well. But for me, the setup is, is being the PowerShell integrated console. And what I want to do here is that I want to run Culp, uh, serve and no browser. And this will essentially make sure that the compilation of the or transformation of the TypeScript to JavaScript has happened, the bundling has happened, and we're ready to go to start uh, debugging of our code as well. So there we go. Now uh, everything is up and running. Our local host is running. Our local host is, um, is, is serving the file. And I can actually go to the code and have a look on the, on the modification. I could do modification that will just rewire uh, that uh, that uh, uh, well that will recompile the, the TypeScript to the JavaScript as we move as we make those changes within the code. But in this case, we wanted to test the debugging. So, if I now come in here and if I do F5 and press F5 in a keyboard, that would actually do the same thing. Or alternatively, I can go to the debugging tab and I can actually come in here and choose start debugging. So that would be actually starting the debugging uh, from the window. Or alternatively, I can go debug uh, menu and start debugging from here. And you can actually see the, the uh, shortcut in that menu as well.
So again, if I'm in here, uh, I can choose debug start and debugging, or I can, I can press also F5, which works as well. So let's actually do that. So I'm pressing F5, what's gonna happen is that another browser window or browser window is actually started. And let's do this side by side so we can easily see what's actually happening uh, while we're doing the debugging. So I'm gonna hide the left uh, navigation. So I'm gonna hide the file section. We can still see that the breakpoint for now hasn't been, has been ignored because the generated code is not found. So uh, the code is not actually hosted within the page. So let me put uh, the web part on a page. And there's the, the web part on a page. It didn't actually yet get a stop on the on the breakpoint, but we can already see that that breakpoint color changed to red, which means that it's now actually loaded within the context. And that means that now if I start doing any modifications, my breakpoint will actually hit within my code. And we can actually now go and see, for example, this uh, dot uh, context is a good example of the information which is getting visible and getting available for your web part. Um, or you can have a look on this dot host or HTTP client and all of those properties within the code. So you can actually do step-by-step -step debugging within a code. And if you're fine, uh, you can also see the, the shortcuts here, which are pretty familiar. And when we're good to go, we can just press F5 and the web part gets getting loaded. And again, when we do modifications, we will hit the breakpoint in this case because this is a reactive web part. It will actually re-render the render section and execute this code every single time and actually doing modification on the page. So that's why the breakpoint is again hitting. But the key point here is that when I do an F5, I will actually get um, that browser to start and it will be attached to the Visual Studio code and I can do actual debugging of my code directly within the Visual Studio code. And that's super cool. Now, how do we do this in the context of SharePoint Online? So let's actually break this one and let's get back on the on, on the files and let me actually open up that launch JSON, which we had a quick look on this one already. So this is the local workbench option, which was the one which is hosting stuff from a local host. But if you wanna do debugging in the context of SharePoint, that's not necessarily what you wanna do because in the context of SharePoint, you have much more additional options and information available. If you wanna test with the live data, uh, as an example, you would actually go to the hosted workbench, which is actually running within the SharePoint. And that URL is then your tenant, underscore layouts and workbench ASPX. So now if I do here SPPMP uh, on, sorry, uh, sharepoint.com, there we go, underscore layout workbench ASPX, I would be in the context of my developer tenant. There's certain options here which you can actually configure, uh, which is the runtime arguments. So depending again, how familiar you're with the Chrome profiles and how Chrome profile work, you might or might not use the incognito option in here. If you use the incognito option, uh, the debugging uh, the host uh, against the host workbench will start in the in uh, against that URL will start in the incognito mode, and you need to sign in. Now, technically, if you know how the profiles actually work, you could get rid of this one. And as long as you are using, uh, as long as you you touch that session or the profile uh, browser, uh, which is in the same in your um, in your tenant context, it would actually run that one and open that one uh, as the debugging window. For time being, for the demonstration purposes, let's actually keep the incognito option still here, and let's go to the debug option. And the default setting is the local workbench. So I want to flip that one to be hosted workbench. And then I'm doing, going to start uh, debugging. And that's going to now start a new browser session. And let's go onto our file and double check that we have an extension. Uh, we have a breakpoint waiting. So let's actually get that one there. And let's open up that one in here. Let's actually sign in to our development tenant. There we go, and then we need to have the password. And this is due to the fact that we are running in incognito mode based on our launch JSON configuration. Again, there's just certain options and uh, which you can choose to configure here. And please have a look on the, on the Chrome debugging uh, details for those. But we can see that this is in incognito mode based on that icon there over there, and that's why we need to sign in as well. So now if I sign in, we can see that we are actually in the layouts workbench. 
and there's a first debug uh, sorry breakpoint is actually getting catch and this is an exception actually in out of the box JavaScript files so that's why that is getting uh, tackled or there's a breakpoint getting hit and uh, so we can ignore that and let's continue forward because we're interested actually on the code which is in here so we are interested on in getting that breakpoint actually to hit so we're able to analyze again our code uh, in against the live SharePoint site. So now if I put the my web part, uh, scroll down and there's my hello world. It didn't fire yet, but we can see that the colors flipped the, the red. And now if I do a mod modification or a refresh on a page, we can actually see that breakpoint to be hit. So it's not this one. This one was the unfortunate out of the box one uh, for time being. And there's our breakpoint point, which is getting hit on our custom code and now we're able to again analyze uh, the values, analyze the context, we're able to analyze uh, additional information and, and do proper debugging against the code, which is running in the context of browser, but we can do the debugging directly in Visual Studio Code. And that's super, super cool. Now, like mentioned, this capability is part of the 1.3.4 uh, uh, SharePoint Framework. If you're using an older version of SharePoint Framework, you need to do some level of a configuration manually. If you're running the version 1.3.4 or a newer version of SharePoint Framework, the only thing what you need to do is install the SharePoint, uh, install the Chrome extension to Visual Studio to Code to make this happen. And obviously, if you have any feedback, please use our GitHub and social media channels to let us know how we can improve your development experience in the future as well. Thanks for watching and let's absolutely stay in touch. Thank you.